Hello again and welcome from Kimmel Bay Church as we turn aside into the scriptures for our daily meditation. Uh, maybe that you're seeing this uh, beginning of the day or maybe during the day, but whatever. We pray that we'll be blessed as we turn to God's word. Today we're in Genesis and chapter 6. The sixth chapter of Genesis, picking up the story at about verse 5 somewhere. And if you'd like to uh, just read those verses, the story that follows that verse, you may like to do that now and press your pause button and then come back to us when you've, you've finished. Now, it may be that as you were a child, you were privileged to be at Sunday school. It may be that you were able to go to Sunday school, Sunday by Sunday, and hear the stories of Jesus and hear the stories from the Old Testament. And uh, you will know this story then that you're reading in Genesis today. You will know the story of Noah and the ark. It is very well known. I don't have to go through the story for you. It is very well known how that Noah was obedient to God. And uh, from Sunday school days, we remember that God had made mankind at the beginning of Genesis. We've been reminded over the last couple of days of God's creation. <clears throat> He'd made mankind and he really loved <clears throat> his creation. God loved his world. He loved his mankind. He loved the animals. He loved the earth that he'd made. And he wanted only the best for it. And we learn today, or we rather remind ourselves today, that um, disobedience towards God, towards our Heavenly Father, means that we sin against him. That word sin, although it's not very popular in our vocabulary today, and it's certainly not very popular with many folks, nevertheless it exists, and sin exists, and sin is disobedience to God. And when we sin, we hurt the loving heart of God. Let's try and remember that this morning. Sin is not just uh, simply, as it were, uh, turning away and disobeying God and being rebellious and so on. It's got a further implication than that. This sinning hurts the loving heart of God because he does love us. He has done so much for us. He has created a lovely world for us to live in. He's, uh, he's watched over us as we've lived in this world. He, he, he provides the very air that we breathe. He loves us and he loves his world. He's done so much for us. And we read in verses 6 and 7 that God was sad. Why was he sad? Well, <laughs> he was sad because mankind had disappointed him. Mankind had let him down. Mankind had let him down. God had created a perfect setup, if you like. He'd created a world, an earth. He'd created the, world, the earth with the animals. He created mankind. He'd created food supplies, a vegetation, and yes, human beings. I remind ourselves again, he created human beings. But... <clears throat> a very big but, capital letters, but, but, sin, sin came in. Sin came in because although the requirements for our first parents weren't really very hard, they weren't really um, um, uh, confined too much to regulations, and yet they disobeyed. They disobeyed God. They turned their back on his instructions. And we do, in our lives, turn our back on instructions from God. Not only that, we are actually born under the curse of sin that our first parents uh, bequeathed us, if you like. We are born sinners. Uh, but the Bible reminds us that whilst we were yet sinners, in other words, whilst we're human beings, Christ died for us. How wonderful. Christ died for us. It's a big but, this one. Sin. We cannot cure ourselves of this sin. We cannot cure ourselves of this state before God. 
and we make the heart of God very, very sad. But God steps in with a new beginning. God steps in with a new beginning. He deals with a sinful earth. He could have just sat back and let things go on and we would be lost eternally. But he didn't. He didn't. He stepped down from his wonderful home from heaven and he stepped into the scene to provide a rescue, to provide um, a coming home for us. Noah was prepared to listen to God. If you read in the story, you'll see that. And he was prepared to obey God. And he was blessed. And you and I are called upon to do the same. We are called upon to listen to the word of God, to listen to the voice of God. We are called upon to listen to the still, small voice within. Sometimes we call that conscience. The still, small voice within, which prompts us and says, look, you're not right with God, really. You need to get right with God. Get your relationship with your maker right whilst there is time. I want to say to you today, let's turn back at the beginning of this new year. Let's turn back. For, I don't believe in New Year re resolutions, by the way, because they're invariably broken by the middle of January. And uh, I'm not really into New Year resolutions. I'm not asking you to make a New Year resolution. I'm asking you to make a decision. I'm asking you to make a decision if you haven't already. Let's turn back from making the heart of God sad. Let's turn back from hurting the one who loves us and only wants the best for us. Will you hear that as I say it this morning? God only wants the best for us, each one of us. He offers us a new start in life and we need to respond. We need to respond. It's a two-way affair. God reaches down to us from his home in heaven. He reached down in the person of his son as he sent him to this earth to die for you and for me. But we need to look up and to reach up and to respond in our hearts. I want to close this morning with just a little uh, few lines that the hymn writer wrote a long time ago. And uh, it says really what I believe we can make our prayer this morning. And yet I want to love you, Lord. Oh, light the flame within my heart, and I will love you as I ought until I see thee as thou art. You might like to slightly change those words if you're a Christian already. You might like to say, I want to love you, Lord. Relight the flame within my heart. I always think that. And I will love you more and more until I see thee as thou art. Goodbye, have a good day, the Lord bless you.